Look around you. People dumber than you are richer than you. From people at your work to these influencer kids who are making way more money than you could possibly dream of. And you're stuck in your nine to five or the business prison that you created for yourself with very little money left in your bank at the end of the month. So throughout the past several years, I tried many things in hopes of breaking free from my traditional line five, where I can live the life that I want. So you name it, I've been a content creator, been a YouTuber, been a blogger. I've launched a video podcast and I've invited these influencers to the podcast to try to pry their secrets. I tried selling digital products. I ran a paid webinar and even joined a marketing coaching program. I spent thousands, years, and after all these trial and error, I finally figured out what it is. Now I know why dumb people are richer than you and me. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you what it is and what you can do about it. So let's backtrack here a little bit. Hi, my name is Helmi. I started my career as an oil and gas engineer in Singapore. It's making decent money there until I got laid off in the 2014 oil crisis. So I moved back to Malaysia and I wanted to pursue being an entrepreneur. You know, we all want to be our own boss, right? But the problem is I didn't know a damn thing about selling because my background was in engineering. So learning how to sell will be my number one top priority because the logic is if I know how to sell, I can successfully run pretty much any business. What do you think? Do you agree with that? So anyways, when I came back, the only immediate available option for me at the time for hardcore sales jobs was either I become a real estate agent or an insurance agent. Since I hate insurance agents with a passion, you can watch this video right here to see what I mean. I signed up as a property agent instead. So I signed up get through all the training. And then in our team, there was this one lady. She was a housewife trying to make some extra money. She's very well-mannered, but not to sound mean, she doesn't seem like the sharpest pencil in the drawer. She's not clinically stupid or anything, but you can tell she's not book smart. So our first task was to sell this property that is a new launch. The sales manager gave us a set of tasks. Here's what you got to do step by step. Call email, Facebook ads, flyers, all that kind of stuff we got to do to make the sale. So when I was looking at the property details, it was at an expensive location. So the price was really high, but there was really nothing special about it. So from my perspective, if I were a potential buyer looking at this with the same amount of money, I would probably buy somewhere else. So in my mind, I already didn't believe in the thing that I'm selling. And guess what? Nobody bought the property from me. That housewife lady, she was pulling in sales left and right. I know because once we have a paid booking, we have to submit the booking form to the admin office so they can process our commissions. And she was going in and out every day. It was crazy. So anyway, during lunch, me and my friends, we were gossiping about like, how the hell she's able to do this? She has achieved to us is impossible. So we concluded, well, maybe because she wasn't that smart, she didn't overthink like the rest of us. Therefore, she just plowed through her sales task, which inevitably resulted in her many, many sales. So that was the first time that proved to me that you don't have to be the smartest person in the world to succeed in life or business. In fact, I feel like the smarter you are, the worse you are as an entrepreneur because you tend to overthink and therefore you stall. So sometimes in life, somebody has achieved the thing that you want to achieve and then they will give you a formula or a framework. All you got to do is follow it. Just like our sales manager has given us the sales tasks that we got to do, the smart kids like us, we were like, eh, we would start questioning why do we have to do this? And then we, did, we don't end up doing it, right? Or we didn't do it as the instructions. So we got no sales. Whereas the housewife, she didn't think much. I'm like, okay, I got to do step one. And then she just plowed through the task and she became successful. So again, if you tend to overthink, like a lot of smart people do, you'll end up questioning why I have to do this and not doing it. And therefore your progress will stall and you will get no results. And ultimately you will blame everyone except for yourself. So after a while, I wasn't making enough money to pay my mortgage. So what ended up happening was I rented out my apartment on Airbnb to try to cover the mortgage. So that quickly took off. So originally I thought if people just book it on the weekends and that could cover my mortgage, I'm, I'm happy already. But turns out because of the location was in central Kuala Lumpur, there's a lot of tourists that book my place. So it was pretty full the whole week. So one studio expanded to two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 10 units at the time. So business was good in 2014 when I started all the way up to 2018. That's when the competition was quite fierce. Everybody was doing Airbnb and that brought the average price 
down. So I knew I had to do some extra marketing to keep my business afloat. So one of the things that I did was I, I created this website and I started blogging SEO articles. So it was like uh, what to do in Kuala Lumpur in three days, best cafes to work for digital nomads because I was attracting those crowds. And then at the bottom of that article is the link to my Airbnb. So despite this pretty noble marketing effort, my Airbnb business collapsed during the pandemic. So during the lockdown, I really had nothing to do. So I changed that website into a personal finance blog. It was a topic that I genuinely liked. The blog eventually expanded into a YouTube channel channel, all well and good, but I still had bills and my mortgage to pay. But it was a terrible time for me to start a new business and nobody was hiring during the lockdown. Thanks to my background of blogging SEO and creating YouTube channels, I managed to get a remote digital marketing job at a tech company. And then I ran my YouTube channel on the side. So I managed to get that job, digital marketing, which has nothing to do with my background with engineering because I have a YouTube channel and a blog. So my life turned okay because in this story, I was the dumb person. I didn't think too much and I said just fuck it let me just launch the blog write some articles launch the YouTube channel create some videos and I kept doing stuff until something worked if it were my old self I would typically overthink should I do a blog should I do a YouTube should I do Twitter should I whatever then I don't do anything and I stop and I wouldn't have all these digital assets which is my blog and YouTube channel that shows my competence in that field. And if I didn't have that, I probably wouldn't have the digital marketing job in the first place because I have no proof of competence. And that job literally saved my ass during the pandemic. So the point of this story is that sometimes in life, you got to try new things and it's okay to fail because that journey is still better than you being stagnant, which is what a lot of smart people do. They overthink, they become stagnant. So if you are smart and you overthink, how can you stop overthinking? In my situation, there was an external factor, which is I lost my job, lost my business, but I still had bills to pay. And me being in that mindset forced me to not overthink because I got bills to pay and I have no more money. And I knew I'd need to do something to get the money. So that's how it works for me. I was documenting my journey of learning about digital marketing. I remember this one time I created a case study of how I grow my TikTok account from zero to 1,000 followers within 15 days. And then some HR on LinkedIn saw that, passed it to the boss, the boss loves it. Then I got an interview. I got a job offer to manage some media company's YouTube channel and the existing editing team. It was a big pay bump, so I didn't really think much about it and I just signed the document. But it turns out that it was a huge mistake because the actual job and my expectation was very mismatched. So long story short, I only ended up working there for about two months. So I went back to square one. By the time, I had about 7,000 YouTube subscribers and about 10,000 followers on Twitter. Following all these creators and influencers that you see online, I managed to make money the way that they say you should be making money as a creator. So I've tried the YouTube partner program, which is ads on your video. I tried affiliate marketing, made some pretty decent money from there. I had some brand sponsorships. I even did paid webinars and I sold digital courses. So if you want to see the entire sources of income that I've built up, you can watch this video right here. So unfortunately though, despite the somewhat success of me making these money online, it wasn't enough for me to replace my full-time job. So I knew I was doing something right, but something is a little off, but I couldn't figure out what it was. So overthinking stepped in once again, and I was constantly asking myself, oh my God, am I in the wrong niche? Am I targeting the right audience? Should I change the language of my YouTube channel from English to the local language? Should I jump on viral trends and risk looking not professional? All these questions, I was really dwelling in them. And while I was doing that, I didn't progress. I didn't make any new videos. Life goes on, days to weeks. Weeks turn into years without posting any new videos or content. So my YouTube channel's growth stalled. So in the meantime, though, my competitors in the personal finance niche in Malaysia, and they were just pumping out content consistently, and their growth skyrocketed. Two guys in my personal finance niche in Malaysia grew to 200k subs within two years. They're so famous now that they've been on TV shows, they've been on the newspaper, and both of these guys have successful media companies now. It's nuts. There's another two channels that they started a YouTube channel actually later than me. I started first. Two channels run by pretty young people. One is by two brothers around 25 years old. And then there's another guy who's just started working a couple of years. They both have 30K subs now. And that is enough for them to quit their high paying full-time job. So all because they were consistent, unlike me, who was overthinking and stalled. So 
I really wanted to know how they really do it, right? Like, I'm pretty sure you want to know as well. So I came up with a genius idea to launch a video podcast. So I invited them on my podcast. They said yes. And then they literally just told them the secrets. Like, you know, this is what you got to do step by step. You can watch the video podcast right here. Now, these guys are not dumb by any means. In fact, they're very, very smart. But the point I'm trying to make here is that I was overthinking because I'm smart and therefore I didn't do anything and I stall my progress. And then when I stall, I don't see any progress, then I get depressed and then I stall even more. It's like this spiraling down in this vicious circle. Whereas all these four guys, they just plowed through and keep on posting content on YouTube, no matter what. And look where they are now. They all quit their full-time jobs. They all have successful media companies. It's nuts what you can achieve in two years with YouTube. So I've been telling you a bunch of stories here. I think you see a pattern here already, right? I learned a lot about money, new digital money, especially, which I think is the future. What I realized is that the digital economy rewards those who take actions towards their opportunities that are presented to them. So this is a quotation that I got from Devon Canuck, cool guy teaching YouTube automation. And this is the very reason why I launched this new YouTube channel, teaching people about how to build a personal brand and how to use YouTube as a sales funnel to get you more clients for your high ticket offer because that is the real way for you to make money, not really the display ads and affiliate. Those are nice to have pocket money, but the real money is you selling something expensive. You want to personal brand yourself as the expert in that thing and use YouTube to create a lot of educational and personal videos about yourself and your service that will eventually drive targeted audience to your offer and therefore you make money. So this whole process is called YouTube funnels. So I'm still very new in my career as a YouTube agency owner and I have a lot more ahead of me, but I hope you learn a lot from the stories that I tell you. Let me wrap it up again. Why are you smart, but you see other dumb people make more than you? It's because you're smart, you tend to overthink. And when you overthink, you don't do anything, your progress stalls, okay? Whereas the dumb people, they don't have the mental capacity to overthink. They have a framework, step one, step two, step three, they just do it and they will inevitably be successful because they do something. So I hope this little video inspires you to become a better version of yourself. So if you want to see what I'm doing now about this YouTube funnels, you can check out this video right here. My name is Helmi, YouTube funnels. See ya.